it, you know, it may be obvious to, to many here, but maybe maybe worth clarifying, and you would probably like to clarify for the sake of uh, viewers elsewhere. This, this this church and state separation worldwide is the commercial overseeing <coughs> of the BBC. Uh, does the, the dirty money grabbing stuff that the, the public service BBC might not want to do itself? Um, but with with that in mind, what are your key aims for digital in the BBC world, worldwide commercial context? So I, I think there are a number of key aims. I mean, first and foremost. It's about delivering profit back to the BBC, right? So that is the raison d'etre of BBC Worldwide, is to take the content, um, the content produced by the BBC, and to exploit it in international markets. That's the, the, the primary focus. Um, but alongside that, of course, comes a sort of secondary mission, which I think is key to the digital mission, which is about um, expanding the knowledge and expanding the reach and distribution of the BBC, and that's where digital is so important. You know, in, in, in some more mature media markets, it's hard to get the level of distribution that the BBC, with the amount of content that it produces, could expect to have, and digital has provided that opportunity through a range of different market entry positions. So what are some of the best examples of that? Some, what are some of your, the best products, your favorite um, products that you put out there digitally? I mean, so in terms of just making the content available as opposed to the products, I think, you know, I, I, I think we have been at the forefront of VOD, unlike other media companies that have traditionally sort of felt quite wary about entering this space because of the, the potential disruption to existing revenue lines. We have been at the forefront of that and seen it as an opportunity to grow share. You know, we were one of the cornerstone partners for iTunes and they launched, we remain so. And you know, you look at you know Doctor Who last year in the United States was the number one show on iTunes, right, which is sort of disproportionate to the to the size of the, the BBC's footprint out there. You know, we beat Mad Men and House and others in the iTunes store because you know, we have been at the forefront of that and working with Apple and we treat it like a retail environment and to a certain extent our content is less available through the traditional ecosystem. And then as the, the rise of our, uh, the rise of subscription bot services, we have been at the forefront of that also. You know, we're a, we're a, um, a big customer of Netflix's. You know, we have um, made a large amount of our content available to them uh, in the US in Canada, in Latin America, in the UK, and as they continue to roll out internationally, we will do so as well. And obviously, that's a great opportunity for BBC content to sort of piggyback off their marketing. You know, when customers who are, who are mainstream and broadly interested in films and television subscribe to Netflix, there's a high possibility that they're going to come across BBC shows, which is a, is a great way to sort of Get more, get more brand awareness, and, and, and get greater availability of our content. So in the life of many media companies, you know, they emerge from ha having this core purpose historically of you know producing the original, their content in original formats, and then along the digital journey, it's been about taking that content to out through new platforms. Uh, and some along the way, um, choose to develop you know actually pure play digital yeah. products. And, how much of what you do is a question of you know, repurposing TV shows in, in on video platforms versus coming up with uh, you know purely new digital products? It's a combination. <coughs> so we're all you know we're all realistic. You know we all understand that there is a shift of value as we move from a physical media world, a DVD world, to a digital world. The margin on a on an iTunes season pass is not what we would get for a DVD box set in the United States. And we need to make that value gap up. Part of that value gap is made up through just taking the TV shows and distributing them in new ways. And part of that is made up through a, a, a range of B2C consumer digital products um, that drive truly additive revenues. BBC.com being an example, um, games being an example, global iPlayer being an example, and it is the combination of all of those, it is a combination of all of those types of revenue that ultimately take us into a new growth trajectory. 
Um, and when you think about delivering commercial um, TV pod in the UK, um, a couple of years back, BBC Worldwide was involved in the Project Kangaroo Consortium yep. with uh, ITV HL4 to, to deliver archive shows um, for, for a fee or with advertising after the public service window. Um, that was struck up on competition grounds. Uh, it ended up in the incarnation of Seesaw, which didn't go too well and has collapsed. Um, is there still a necessity for you to deliver those shows in the commercial environment in the UK? I mean, and if so, would that be under your own steam? Or, you know, you mentioned you're distributing through the likes of Netflix. Are you yeah. going to be doing that primarily through those aggregators? Or do you do BBC Worldwide want to uh, own the platform as well? I think it's a, I actually think it's both, right? I mean, you know, first and foremost, I actually think Kangaroo was a great idea. Right, and uh, I think it was grossly unfair that the Competition Commission uh, decided to squash it, and it just shows how new, old, tra older traditional businesses, TV media businesses, are you know are regulated in one way, and new media businesses and you know you know like S pod players are regulated in a completely different way, and I actually think it was a bad thing for the UK economy. I think it was a bad thing for. Um, the, for, for British broadcasters, and you know, it was a step backwards from where we probably should have been. But yet, we still maintain that we can operate a kind of dual approach by making our content available to third parties and by building our own products in the UK. You know, we are investing heavily in e our e-commerce platform, you know, which has traditionally been a sort of the BBC shop. You know, we have a we have a, a, a much stronger strategy to make that a much more compelling offering. And we hope that that will come alongside, you know, um, the, you know, we won't just be selling physical product, electronic sell through, you know, potentially even locker services in the future of some sort or another, you know. So that would be, be Sun and Kangaroo, obviously, is, is, is BBC's BBC shop brand? I wouldn't say it was Sun of Kangaroo. I'd say that, you know, it's a platform through which we'll be selling our own product, right? Um, it, and, and, and that may take various forms. You know, we'll start the easiest way, which is come to the store, would you like to buy a DVD? Would you like to buy the, the digital version? Would you download that? Would that be available in a local service? And then over time, do you get to enough scale where a subscription service makes sense? Who knows? I hope so, partly, but you know, the, we're, still, we're still early on in this game. Yeah. Um, a couple of months ago, I reported that the public service BBC was planning, to, planning uh, its own platform to commercialise BBC uh, TV shows, uh, codenamed Project Barcelona, um, which I understand was news to BBC Worldwide, uh, since that seems to be BBC Worldwide's remit. Um, what was Worldwide's view of Barcelona, since that seems like the kind of function that we were already just talking about? Yeah, look, I mean, I, I don't think it is. Uh, it certainly wasn't news to me, um, Project Barcelona. I think th there is. Um, you know, the, 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 there is a strong connection between the BBC and BBC Worldwide, and yet there are also very different motivations behind it, and rightly so. Right? BBC Worldwide maximises profit. Right? That's the way we think. You know, when we think about launching an e-commerce store, we know that it makes financial sense to make only a small subset of BBC's content available. Right? The public service BBC has a broader public service remit. To them, they would like to be able to offer the public everything the BBC has ever produced. You know, the 15-part documentary about, you know, is in you know, Brunel's, you know, daughter is, you know, should be made available on some other service. Now, the Barcelona is a mechanism, is a project where we're looking at, together, BBC Worldwide and the BBC, how we might make that work, right? And I think it's still very much in its early stages, but there is, there is a need to make it both in the public, you know, in the to, to deliver public value, but also to deliver commercial return at the same time. I mean, people often say that the BBC is, um, you know, a very political entity within, <laughs> with just within the public service side. But um, it must be very, very. I mean, these are two very different mindsets: the commercial side working with the public service side. Is that ever frustrating? You know what? I, I'm I'm amazed. I've been at BBC Worldwide now for two years, and I expected it to be much more frustrating than it is. So I'm pleasantly surprised by the fact that it isn't. It isn't. I mean, I think the th the way I look at it is that 
we're profit maximising and the BBC is primarily concerned with the public value and, and the protection of the BBC brand. And I like the fact that they act as a kind of... They, they, they stop me doing deals that may potentially have an impact on the BBC brand. And that is why the BBC brand is so strong today. Right? You know, it is because they have that kind of guardian effect. And because the BBC Worldwide has those core values too, you know, there, there, sometimes that trade-off needs to be made. And I don't think it more as political, more as a there, is a... there is a debate to be had sometimes about whether or not that's the right way to maximise the profit or not. And that is in the best interest of everybody in the long term at the BBC. What do you think of, uh, what do you think of the IPTV opportunity? Connected TV looks like it could be big, or connection, actual connection rates apparently are low. What, what's BBC Worldwide's <coughs> strategy for delivering stuff onto that? Um, I'm hugely excited by it. Right? I, I mean, so I, the, the connection rates are low, but it takes a bit of, with all these all these take technology firstly to get some penetration within households in any given market. And I think that by 2015, 2016, we'll be seeing enough connected TVs in the home. Then getting them connected and also critically connected to enough oomph, enough bandwidth is the most important thing. So I bought a connected TV and it was rubbish, right? You know, this was like six months ago. It was like, I was like, why did I, you know, why did I do this? You know, this is, I can't believe I went and spent more money on technology and it really is, you know, the children complain because it buffered. And then I, I, I made the switch to Virgin Media and I put 100 megabits into the home and tweet the network and it is, it is revolutionary. When you get full HD, no buffering, and critically with, with where I think Apple is going, not necessarily that you know, they will continue, the, 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 the resources that they're putting into connecting their devices through AirPlay into Apple TV boxes makes it very, very powerful. I actually think it's, it is that so, it is AirPlay is the kind of the key for Apple into television. And I think everyone thinks about it as like a TV, whereas actually I think that's the component part. It's you know, one day just switching your phone on and all those apps just appearing on your, automatically with no, with nothing to do on your television is probably the kind of direction they're heading in. And I actually think that's very, very exciting. Yeah, there's this idea of, you know, not so much smart TV, but actually done TV, and maybe yeah. the TV will just be a really awesome, high-quality screen, mm -hmm. many of the experiences delivered from the sofa. Yeah, and, but yet at the same time, that there needs to be that technology that glues it, because you need to know that this is being rendered on a television, right? And therefore, the, the vising up of apps and the vising up of the quality needs to be sufficient to make it... What you don't want is a really high quality dumb screen and a really low quality experience on that, right? That's, the, that's where I think AirPlay is the, the key here. Okay, um, need to wrap up. Andy? Thank you very much. Thank you.